Good afternoon, Internet. I'm Matt Buyak, and in this video I will attempt to solve Project Euler problem number 7, which asks us to find the 10,001st prime number. So in the last video, I had specifically said that I wasn't going to jump right into problem number 7, uh, and that's because I thought that a solution um, following best programming practices uh, would be too long to fit in a single video. Um, but I changed my mind. I decided that we're going to do a quick and dirty solution, and then in a subsequent video, uh, I'll talk about some of those best practices and uh, how we can use those to clean up our code. Um, so let's get right into it. As usual, we'll uh, copy our template directory to make our uh, problem directory. And uh, let's see, let's open up our analysis file. So um, probably the, the simplest um, and one of the most efficient algorithms for calculating prime numbers is the Siva Veritosthenes. Um, I, I sort of alluded to this in a previous video. I think it was problem uh, number three. Um, and the, the idea of, of this algorithm is that you start by listing off um, all the um, natural numbers um, other than one. Uh, you know, something like this obviously continues forever. Um, and you start the, the first one, two, and that becomes your first prime number. Uh, and then you go through and you're going to remove uh, every number that's divisible by two there and uh, oops okay and then you go on to the next number three and that becomes your next um, uh, prime number and then we go through and we remove all of the numbers um, that are divisible by three so in this case we just have, have nine there um, and you'll notice now when we go on to the next number uh, we've already removed four, so uh, we go on to five instead, and that becomes our third um, prime number. And we continue in this way um, until uh, we've generated you know, as many primes as we'd like. Um, now, there are a few, a few notes about actually implementing this algorithm. Um, one is that we can't actually list out all the natural numbers, uh, there being an infinite number of them. Uh, so we have to decide on some upper bound where we're going to stop our search. Um, the other thing is that actually implementing the algorithm as I just demonstrated here uh, isn't particularly efficient. That is, if we're storing our, our list of numbers in an array, uh, then removing an element from the array in the middle isn't an efficient operation. Um, and that's because we would have to shift um, you know, each number uh, uh, after the one that we've removed uh, back um, and then we would have to do that for every number that we've that we remove um, the other thing is we don't actually have to store the full number in each slot here um, uh, and that's because we know what slot in the array corresponds to which number we know that the the two is going to be in slot zero three is going to be uh, in slot one four is going to be in slot two etc etc so all we really need um, is, uh, 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 you know, we, we can initialize our array here to, um, to a bunch of ones. And, uh, and we know that this first one is going to correspond to, to two. Um, and then we're going to go through and we're going to set every other, every other one here is going to be set to, uh, to zero. And, uh, and then we move on to the next number, or the, the, the next number that is still, uh, you know, set to one, which indicates that it's in our list. Um, and so that's going to correspond to to three. And then, uh, and then we're going to go through and remove all the numbers um, that are multiples of three. So we have you know, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, six you can see has already already been removed, so we don't have to set that to to zero. Uh, six, seven, eight. 9, okay, well, 9 was still set to, to 1, so we can set that to 0 uh, to, to remove 9, um, and, and so on. And then, uh, uh, you know, 5 here, uh, or, or uh, so now we, when we move on to the next number, we see that, that, you know, 4, as before, has been removed, and so 5 is going to be our next 
um, prime number. Then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh well, ten's already been been removed. Um, and so you can see how this uh, this implementation is is pretty efficient. Um, and so that I think that's most of the background that we need. Uh, let's let's get into writing some code. So here's our uh, our main, and let's just um, as a uh, global variable here, let's uh, uh, declare our upper bound, and we'll say that's um, uh, let's say you know 100 for now. We'll we'll ramp that up. Um, when we go to actually solve the problem. But for now, we'll just set that to uh, 100. Uh, actually, I, uh, let me change how, how we're doing this because I'm, uh, uh, no, I think, I think this will work. I think this will work. So there's a difference between C and C++ where uh, C++ will, I believe, let you use um, constant expressions um, to initialize the size of an array while C will not. Um, in any case, the compiler will, will let us know if we're if it doesn't like what we're doing, um, and so uh, uh, let's do um, you know, bool uh, civ um, it is i before e as is often the case. Civ. Uh, so there's our civ there. It's going to have uh, n elements, um, and then we're going to uh, you know just initialize that to um, use memset to initialize our civ to all zeros, and um, that's right. We can just use uh, n there. Okay, so this this memset function is just going to uh, set everything. Oh, ex excuse me. I'm uh, I'm actually doing this backwards. We want um, we want to set everything to all all ones. So this is uh, the hex value um, ff is going to correspond to uh, a byte containing. Um, oh no no. We only we only need to set that to one. That's that one will be will be adequate. I'm uh, yeah. That should be fine. Uh, okay, so we've initialized our our sieve. Um, now let's see. We probably want a uh, you know i and j. Um, we probably want to keep track of the number of primes that we found. Set that to zero. Um, and uh, I think that might be might be enough. Okay, let's uh, let's set. Just to, to, to simplify things a little bit. Um, actually, no. We'll um, I think we'll have we'll have zero b two. That that's just fine. Okay, so we'll say for uh, i equals zero, i is less than um, n, and we'll say uh, if uh, civ i then we're going to increment the number of primes that we found. Yeah. Um, oh, we we will want. Um, yeah, let's let's actually let's actually do it this way. Let's do it this way. Um, Yeah, this way the um, the slot and the the number will will correspond, um, and also our upper bound will correspond to what we expect. Um, so that is rather than having uh, 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 slot zero correspond to slot two, we'll just have slot two correspond to uh, to slot two. <clears throat> okay, so um, we uh, we found our next prime, so we'll increment the number of primes that we found. Um, and then we will, uh, let's actually, uh, we'll call it, uh, target prime. Um, 
and eventually we'll want uh, uh, we'll want this to be ten thousand and one. But um, just taking a quick look back at the the problem statement, it gives us the example that the sixth prime is thirteen. So let's uh, let's make that our our test input here, setting the the target prime to six. So um, if the number of primes that we found is equal to our uh, target prime, uh, then we're going to say um, prime number percent u is equal to percent u, and uh, so it's going to be um, you know, target prime. And then the value is just going to be uh, i. And at that point, we can return. OK, now if it is not our target prime, then we need to continue uh, with the algorithm. So that is removing all of the multiples um, uh, of, of, of i. So, we're, uh, so let's set um, you know, for j is equal to uh, i plus i. Uh, j is uh, less than n plus plus or uh, j plus equals i. So uh, this is just going to start. So for example, if i is two, um, then j is going to start off at four, and then six, eight, etc. If if uh, if i is three, then j will start off at six, and then nine, twelve, fifteen. Etc. So this is just iterating over uh, all the multiples of i. Um, so then we'll just say uh, sieve j is equal to zero. Okay. Um, and then if we if we get to the end of our algorithm and we have not found um, our prime, it might be helpful to print out um, the largest prime that we did find. Uh, so we haven't actually recorded that. Um, so let's let's um, let's do that. We'll just say um, you know, uh, unit thirty two t uh, you know largest known prime. And, um, and then just whenever we find a prime here, we'll just set uh, you know, largest known prime equals i. Okay, I believe that should be correct. Um, I think uh, uh, it's going to complain about me using memset here. I think memset requires um, something unusual. I think it might be like a, a string.h or something like that. Let me just look that up real quick. Yeah, it is, uh, is string.h, okay. And uh, let's open up our shell. Go into our uh, problem directory and make. And SAR. OK, so we have uh, prime number 6 equals 13. So that's promising. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll just go uh, straight into. I'm just trying to think if there's a um, if there's a way that we could uh, test our our program a bit more thoroughly. Um, I 
I think that I think that'll be fine for now. Um, okay, so we don't actually know what value of n we need in order to get our um, our target prime. If we if I just put in you know ten thousand one here, obviously um, when I run this, it's you know the the largest prime greater than um, or, or less than one hundred is going to be ninety seven. Um, and so obviously we, we didn't find our 10,000 first prime. Um, and so we could just sort of blindly um, you know, ramp this up here, but there's actually kind of a, a neat um, theorem that I think uh, might make sense to pull in at this point. Um, uh, so there's something called the, the prime number theorem, which uh, states that the... Um, the number of primes less than a certain number is roughly uh, n over log n, I believe. And so, um, if we want that to be equal to uh, to ten thousand, um, let's see here. So, so uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about, it, there's not actually an easy way of of, um, of solving that equation. But we can we can punch it in uh, here pretty pretty easily. So let's let's just suppose we do. You know, um, one million divided by um, oops, you know, log of, and we actually want that's um, we want the the natural log there. So divided by uh, natural log. Um, okay, so that that gives us uh, seventy two thousand. Um, and so uh, that's a bit more than we than we actually need. Uh, so let's say we generate the um, you know five hundred thousand, or we look for primes less than than five hundred thousand. Okay, so that's going to give us um, you know thirty eight thousand. So still still more than we need. Um, and it, it would have been almost as fast to just you know plug these into our program and have it run. But I think this is this is kind of a neat uh, theorem to be aware of. Um, and so uh, uh, I took this excuse to pull, to pull that in. Okay, so that's that's going to give us 20,000 primes. That's, um, uh, I, think that, I think that's probably good enough. Obviously, there's no disadvantage to generating more primes than we need other than the fact that... Um, Actually, no. There, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we'll we'll be allocating more memory up front, but um, other than that, uh, there's there's not really any downside there. So if we say uh, two hundred fifty thousand, um, then we can see that the ah um, uh, yes, the uh, the ten thousand first prime is uh, one hundred four thousand seven hundred forty three. And uh, if we go back to the archive here, we see that matches our expectations. So in the next video, like I mentioned, um, we'll take the solution and clean it up a bit. And uh, uh, we're going to have many problems um, you know, that involve generating prime numbers. So we really want to have a, a robust solution for, for doing so. Um, you know, this approach, uh, kind of required us to know ahead of time how many um, uh, how many primes we needed, uh, you know how how far we were going to search for our primes, um, and some of those details it would be nice to to abstract away. So we'll we'll cover that in the next video.